I love that song. Yeah, yeah, Fall For You. That is uh, a beautiful song from a beautiful songstress who is a soul singer. And her name is Leela James. Welcome inside the Quiet Storm, baby. I'm Lenny Green. Nice to be close to you. And uh, company has arrived. This brother, you know, we're reminiscing uh, before we kind of uh, opened up the mics tonight to just uh, reflect on our history and our past. And uh, they cross. They, they cross, except he has a lot more money than I do. Uh, probably has far more houses than I don't, I don't even have a house yet, but we're working on trying to build one up. Uh, but this brother, you've seen him, you've watched a great majority of his work over the years, and uh, one of our well-established and growing uh, actors of the business. And, of course, he's so action-packed on many levels. We're going to find out where the love, where the secondary love really lies. But, of course, you know him uh, from the hit series most recently that's been blowing up on the OWN network. It's called For Better or For Worse. And he, his role is uh, Marcus, and he's married to an interesting lady by the name of Angela. That's her character role, but it is an honor and a pleasure to welcome Mr. Michael Jai White to uh, The Quiet Storm. Brother, it is so great to see you, man. man it's good to be and, back and I, here. I, I thank you. you. So you stay West Coast most of the time, huh? Yeah, yeah, that, that's home now. But, wow. I mean, coming back here, that that's like, this is the radio station I grew up on. I know that's right, brother. Yeah, I yeah. know that's right. Frankie Crocker, <laughs> you know. I mean, that's that's memories for me. Well, well, you know what, man? The memories is just a portion of what happens in our life. And then the music encircles our life. You know, if, you, if we listen to certain songs, you know, we can probably almost pinpoint what we were doing, who we were with, mm-hmm. where we were at at that particular time. So, you know, aside from, from the memories of places, it's is what I kind of hopefully bring back from time to time. And that's uh, just retracing the memories of our mind with the music. And I know you go back, man. Mike and I, we go back to Connecticut days. Yeah. Yeah. That's y- YBC. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. gosh. You know, and when I had hair, <laughs> and you still have hair, and it's, it, it's his real hair, y'all. You know, I remember one of my barbers was telling me I should get a, uh, oh, maybe you should get a, a rug, a, a toupee. I'm like, are you crazy? I'm not going to ever do that. Michael J. White is with us tonight. Like, ladies, if you'd like to talk with him up close and personal, I would love for you to do that. It's uh, simply to call 1-855-453-6694, 1-855-453-6694. You know, Mike, you came at a perfect time of the night. This is the time of the night where we talk about relationships. Ooh. Now, for better or for worse, mm-hmm. is uh, uh, a hell of a series, you know, and you guys got picked up for another series. So congratulations on that. Thank you. So who better than you? to answer this question uh, from a lot of different perspectives. The question on the table tonight is, is it a man's responsibility to keep his woman happy in the relationship? And if he doesn't, does she have a right to complain? And the answer from Mike would be? Absolutely. So, happy wife, happy life? Absolutely. Yeah. But, but I mean, of course, everything's got its uh, its levels, you know what I mean? You should, you know, it, sometimes if... Um, if it's beyond your grasp to make somebody happy, you need to make them happy by stepping the hell away. <laughs> you know what I mean? And <laughs> make yourself even happier. Right, yeah. I mean, you know, it's to, to, to certain levels. But, yeah, that's that's our job. I think, you know, we got the, the strong shoulders and, and all that to, you know, to, you know, hold the... Uh, to bear the the brunt of the, the the work, you know what I mean? Okay, all right. Yeah. Let, let's find out if everybody else is saying that. One eight five five four five three six six nine four. I thought everybody got to be happy. Wife got to be happy. Husband got to be happy. But I could be wrong. I'm a single guy. So let's talk about it. Michael J. Wright is with us tonight inside the Quiet Storm. Here's Eric Eric Fene. Thanks for watching behind the scenes and, and locking in with us. This is the time of the night where we give you just a lot more than what you bargained for. And uh, you can see us up close and personal. We'll cover a lot of ground that we may not be able to cover on air in full. And we can talk in depth. Uh, Michael John White is with us tonight. And this brother, his body of work speaks for itself. And I think, you know, if you are a big action pack and you, you love martial art, obviously this cat is... One of the professionals uh, that holds it very, very easy. And I think all of us, man, go back to um, the character role that you played, Spawn. And I, I heard, and, and I want you to clarify, I heard that that was a very, very happy moment. You, you enjoy those kind of roles. As a matter of fact, you're making a resurgence in that kind of role element uh, with Rise and Falcon. Is that is that true? Well, yeah, with Falcon Rising, I'm doing like a lot of... Um 
it's kind of more of the traditional uh, action movie, which is uh, something I look forward to doing. Uh, I've been playing roles that are just kind of like heightened reality, just kind of otherworldly, like, you know, Spawn, uh, uh, Black Dynamite, these, these, these movies like that, they're kind of extreme. Right? Yeah. This, yeah. this time I'm playing kind of a straight up action hero type of thing. You, you like know? those roles? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's what I, I always wanted to be able to do. I feel like it's a luxury to play something closer to who you are. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like a, a real guy. Like a, a, It's more of a Denzel Washington type of role, which right. is, I don't feel like I have to strain very much. Because it comes very natural to you. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you, you do these roles uh, effortlessly, like you said. So is it more of a stretch for you to do other creative roles? Because you've been well-trained and, and mm -hmm. well-diverse as an actor for quite some time. I was looking at uh, some of the flicks, uh, Exit Wound, and then we got Android Cop. I forgot about that. Right, yeah. A lot of these roles I did just because I think about the long run. So I'll do these, these character-type roles just to show that I have a diversity. Right. You know, right. because once I get to playing the leading man hero type stuff, which is, I think, my strongest stuff, because, I mean, you know what I mean? That's I get to play close to who I am. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to show that I can do these other things. But it seemed like my career started being kind of filled with those other things, those yeah. very strange roles. And then um, now, you know, coming around to doing the stuff I've re been really wanting to do. Look, if you'd like to talk up close and personal with Michael tonight, you're more than welcome to do that. 1-855-453-6694. 1-855-453-6694. Hit us up on the love lines and let's talk about it tonight. Um, you got picked up for a second season uh, for better and for worse. Fourth, another season. Yeah, this, this is the fourth season that, that we just... Um, Brother, you guys I are making it happen. I just finished. I, I mean, when I got off the plane, yeah. that's where I came from. Wow. Yeah, we just finished the, the last uh, last season as this new season starts. Wow. So, I mean, what you're seeing, I mean, it, it, the, the fourth season premiered yesterday, and we just finished the, I guess, the fifth season wow. of shooting it. That is crazy. Yeah. So how grueling is that? Like, when you go into shooting the season, it's how many weeks or how many or months? We've done, season? this is something that has never been done before. We, last week, yeah. In five consecutive days, we shot 12 episodes. That's crazy. Normal, normally, you shoot one episode a week of a sitcom. We shot 12. That's crazy. So we, we would be shooting three a day. Because, I mean, it was, it's not just to brag on us, but we really gel as a unit. I mean, a lot of the people, really I mean, we four of us are directors and writers and, you know, we produce and stuff anyway. So it's kind of like... I don't know. It's kind of like we got like a, a boot camp. And going. you have a self-discipline, too, because you know exactly how far and how you need to do what you do. And for this being the fourth season, Lord knows you, you guys rehearsed it. You almost know each other's DNA. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then then Tasha Smith and I go back. Like We're, we're uh, like 20 years deep. Well, she's a New Yorker. Well, right? Y'all go back, well, go back she, well, to New York. Camden. Camden. Yeah, she's Camden. But we used to, you know, we used to date. Oh. Yeah, back in back the day, day. Back in the day, we was <laughs> we was an item, and so it's it's a trip that you know we would be put together with the Why Did I Get Married movies, and yeah. then now we got the show, and it's a all nice this combination. time, all this, and we're the best of friends, wow. always been. Um, it I mean, helps with the chemistry, doesn't it? It helps. Well, absolutely, with absolutely. I mean, I I know her like from way you know from where she where she came from, and I, I'm probably. I get to be one of the most proud people around because sure. I, I know her struggle. Man, I didn't know she had a twin sister. Yeah. I'm in St. Martin. I was like, wow, in my producer, and I was like, is that the actress? I'm like, looks like her, but you know, she had, yeah, well, her hair was off. So I'm like, well, you know, ladies wear a lot of wigs from time to time, so maybe, maybe and it is her. They used to have the same hairstyle. Wow, that's confusing. That was, yeah, that was really And hard. their personality is really insane. <laughs> I mean, it's really hard to tell. At least yeah. it was hard for me to tell. Well, yeah, you got to know them really well. To, to really well, them. and yeah. obviously you do, but yeah. I didn't, yeah. so she definitely had me fooled. Hey, Vito, we're going to uh, try to take a couple of calls um, regarding the topic tonight. So let's go with um, Kimberly on line one. Hey, Kimberly. Hi, Lenny. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Because I just talked to you the other night, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. You know, we got... On my birthday. It was uh, Monday on my birthday. 
Happy birthday, Miss Virgo. Happy birthday. You know, Again, we, we got yeah. company tonight, so I want you to say hello to Michael Jai White. I know. You know, I'm such a great big fan of his. Can I say hello to him? Uh, he's listening to you right now, babe. Oh, my God, Michael. You are absolutely gorgeous. I love all of your work. I think the most recent movie that I've seen of yours was, uh, it was like the Street Fighter movie. I can't remember the name of it. A little Asian guy and... You're just kicking behind all throughout the movie. So mm-hmm. I love I your work, and I, I love you. you so thank you, thank you. I think you're talking about Blood and Bone, <laughs> that one. <laughs> yes, exactly, yeah, Blood yeah. and Bone. You know what I did? I bought it on my phone, on my smartphone, and mm. I watched it on the phone. So really good movie. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah. But listen, yeah. about this little, um, you know, the what you're talking about tonight, yeah. it is absolutely the brother or the man's responsibility to keep his woman or to make the woman happy. However... That responsibility does not lie solely on that man. Mm. So you have to look at it. Women, especially sisters today, we're career women. We have our own businesses. We do a lot for ourselves to make ourselves happy. So it, it's just nice to have a man or to have that brother just kind of balance it out, you know, and keep the happiness going. You agree with you that, know? Mike? Well, yeah. I mean, I think there's one thing we got to talk about is, okay, keep his woman happy, right? So that means... Absolutely. That means there's a hurdle that's already been even been Account. jumped over. Yeah. So if this is somebody right. you have decided to make your woman, mm. well, then, therefore, yeah, you're supposed to make her happy. You have I mean, to be, make her be, happy, be, of course. Be, be, you know, like you I make said, each other you know, happy. I mean, that that's the other side of the thing. But it's not just solely on one, one side. But I feel that's like... That's what I'm the, saying. It's not solely his responsibility to keep you happy because... If you rely on that brother constantly to keep you happy and you're not doing anything for yourself yeah. to make you happy, I mean, pamper yourself, go have your nails done, have your hair done. There's certain things that we have to do as women to keep ourselves happy, but it is the responsibility of that special someone, that special man in your life yeah. to make you happy and to keep you happy as well. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, w- I would lean on the side of the more of the man's responsibility than the woman because mm. there's certain things that men, we, we come accustomed to doing a little bit better. You know, exactly. just, yeah, because exactly. I mean, we you know we deal with the outside world. We sure. you know we, we gotta do so without really faltering. You know, we we're Absolutely. not as emotional more so, so than a woman. Yeah, so we, we you know yeah. we're the generals. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. right. In the battlefield. Right. So so yeah, I, I well I as feel, a general, I, I would love to be a soldier in your army, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice move, Kimberly. That was real smooth. That was real smooth, baby. Real smooth. Hey, look, but, Kimberly. But you know I had to be quick, right? Yes. Well, you're a Virgo, so I Anything. understand your technique. Yeah, of I, course, I got you. Of course. So it's in my nature. But, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. But, Lenny, as always, thank you for loving music. Thank you for supporting. I appreciate it, my love. You're more than welcome, man. Take care. Good night, Michael. Good night. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> thank you so much. Number three. We got Brother Derek. Hey, Derek. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Hey, Derek. Yes. Hey, man, I need you to turn your radio down for me, please. Okay. I did. Hey, brother, uh, thanks for checking in with us tonight, man. I got one of uh, one of Holly's, Hollywood's most distinguished actors with me tonight. Say hello to Michael Jai White. How you doing, Mike? How you doing, man? So you're calling in to uh, give us your thought on this topic, man, so talk to us. Yes, I agree with you on the topic. Uh, yes, a brother does have to, uh, he is responsible for keeping his lady, his wife, you know, happy. And if not, she has every right to complain because, <laughs> because if, uh, I believe he has to, he, whatever he did to get that young lady as a part of his life, he has to maintain and keep up. But doesn't it go keep back and forth? Or life? am I missing the beat on this? Like, doesn't, like, because both should be satisfying each other mm-hmm. most, no? Or am, am I, I missing the beat? I agree. I agree with that. I, it, it does. It goes both ways. Absolutely. But, because uh, if the woman should, address- if the woman should decide to slack off and mm-hmm. and not maintain or not do some of the things that she was doing to captivate your attention, our attention, then we're going to lose interest as well. Absolutely. Sure. I, I no question there. But since the question was put in the way it was put, I, I answered it that way. Okay. But it is a definite both way uh, situation. But Absolutely. Would, would you think it's fifty-fifty, or do you think the onus is on the man? I think I think when two people are together or trying to grow together over a period of time, sometimes one has to give a little more than the other because you both are individuals, and because you're individuals, you're not going to see everything eye to eye. 
Yeah. So when it comes to that, sometimes you bend, and hopefully some, somewhere along the line, she'll learn that she has to bend a little just so that you can come to a common place. Well, that's compromise. And compromise works effectively, I would think, uh, whether you're dating or uh, truly, truly, I would think, when you're married. No? Compromise doesn't... Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, the, these things, I don't think there's arguments to right. them. I think the thing that the, the hard, uh, or the, I think the focus of the thing is, is it more of the man's responsibility? Right. So we're, we're, think, we're pointing out. Now, if we, ha- if we benefit in other ways, mm. okay, then shouldn't we balance that out with being, like I say, the general, the the boss in this situation. Right, right. Okay, because wow, I mean... Wow, that's, that's a very good question. You know why? Because right now, just listening to you ask that question, I basically was drifting towards a basic 50-50 type of situation. Why? Because I figure like this. When two people meet and they actually try to establish a relationship, and not knowing one another to any degree at all, they somehow have to find a common ground. And when they find that common ground, they had to, we all know communication is, is the link. But they have to utilize that common ground to the fullest extent. Now, pertaining to uh, the question asked, I, would, I, I, I have to say 50-50. Okay. Hey, man. All right. That's yeah. your perspective. I yeah. appreciate it. I mean, my, my my feeling is that, I mean, there's uh, I I don't want to get too too no, deep you. into this, I you, but I I think there's an issue of, and I'm not not singling you out. I'm just talking about society. I just think that we're you know we're losing manhood. Oh yeah, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there's wow. to me, and that's with generation too. I mean, I mean, yeah. these women are not supposed to be men. Right. I mean, and I think what's mi- what's missing is that men are not stepping up and taking uh, control and responsibility and and um, really to the to our strengths of, as as men is it's like there's so much in society to where people are accepting like excuses and all this other stuff. Yeah. But I think you know, just by nature, just nature wise, we are you know the more you take charge, the more a woman's going to be a woman. Right, right, but we have to own up to that responsibility. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. I, I, I agree with you there, too. It's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting topic you have tonight because sometimes you do have to be that man. You have to stand up and be that individual that says, you know what, this is what we have to do, and this is the way we have to do it because this is what's going to probably work for us. And it's not so much dictating, but it's it's like looking, again, looking for that common place where you both can come to to the realization of seeing it logically and dealing with it from that point. Hey, brother, I appreciate you checking in with us and expressing yourself tonight, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate you listening, hey, man. Listen, I, I, hey, listen, thank you for the good music. Thank you for the conversation. Mike, God bless you, my brother. You take too, care. man. You take care. Thanks for calling in. Oh, you know it. All right, brother. Peace. This is The Quiet Storm Behind the Scenes. Uh, we're having a deep conversation tonight. The topic on the table tonight, is it a man's responsibility to keep his woman happy in the relationship? And if he doesn't, does she have a right to complain? 1-855-453-6694. 1-855-453-6694. You're up here in New York City, man. I know the Urban Film Fest is happening. Yeah. And uh, actually, uh, Rising Falcon is is making its debut? Or Well, yeah. Um, it, we're, we're opening in, in select theaters. We had... Um, when does it officially? Yeah, well, it's uh, officially was it like last week? Yeah. Okay. And so then it's like uh, opening in different theaters and then you know expanding. Good, good. Yeah. And uh, this is, I'm assuming, part one of many more to come. Yes, yes. But this is going to be an interesting series, man. I, I can't wait to see it. Thanks, thanks. Now, I mean, yeah, we got a screening tomorrow. <laughs> right, in New York. Yes. Uh, so if you're in New York, please uh, make it a point to come up to, I believe the screening is taking place on 34th Street at the AMC Theater. That's right. Uh, right off of 8th Avenue. So uh, it's a wonderful show, a wonderful theater, and obviously they, they support a lot of uh, 
a lot of up and coming filmmakers who are doing their thing. And I know you have a, a great appreciation for that. You, you know, having fell in love with uh, film for uh, quite some time, and now you're, you shared with me that you're directing and you're yes. expanding your brand yeah. in other arenas as well. Um, where can we expect from you, hopefully in that arena, what's the fourth, uh, coming forth? Well, um, I, I've got a few movies coming out. I got a movie with, uh, and those action fans may know Tony Ja. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, I have a movie called Skin Trade coming out next year with Tony Ja, uh, uh, Dolph Lundgren, Peter Weller, and uh, Ron Perlman. So it's like wow. it's, it's Spawn, wow. <laughs> RoboCop, wow. Hellboy, and Punisher. Dude, the same movie. and you do your yeah. own stunts? Yeah, yeah. I mean, shoot, I, I wish I didn't have to, but there's not there's not like a there's not really that many stuntmen that's like. You know I what? Know I saw this stuff. and this guy, his nickname that I that I have in my head, you're Mr. Muscle. I mean, between you, Mary, and Terry Crews, you're, you're the most buff cats <laughs> in this game. I mean, you know that would be an interesting combination because you guys, man, y'all work out hard. If if I could just somehow buy the body and put it on me, I would really appreciate that, brother. And I know, I know, there's a lot of pain and sweat that went in time that goes into that. So you keep a very tight regimen. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> you know, you got. You, I, I, you know, I, I'm this. I'm what you call dysmorphic. Really? Which is like it's almost like the opposite of anorectic. Like I think I'm a much smaller person until I see myself on screen. Well, you, and I feel like light. You know, like I, that's what I don't, I don't. You know, but like so intellectually, I know. Okay, I, you're larger than you think you are. Right. But, but I just think of like. I think of myself as an athlete. <laughs> you know, and, like and is life. it true? Is it true yeah. that the cameras put a, ten more pounds on you? Yeah, which is which really messes me up. Right, because when yeah. you're looking at yourself, that's what yeah, you're looking at. Yeah, I don't, at. I don't, I don't think I'm that size. Wow, dude. Uh, yeah, at all. Well, yeah. that, well, camera film is different than photography. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've seen still shots, so mm -hmm. I mean, you you see exactly what the truth is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I'm usually before a movie, I try to trim down as much as really? possible. So yeah. when it comes to, and I want to talk about that because you know, obviously that's one of the challenges we as, as people of color we have all the time, and mm -hmm. that is maintaining a, a healthy lifestyle. You chose to do that, but you, you know, I understand where your early beginnings and your training mm -hmm. comes from because you got into martial art very young. So yeah. did that help you maintain a healthy regimen uh, throughout the years? Well, I don't know what came first. I think I've always thought of health as like a primary uh, thing, like, Really? I just never could understand why folks would do something that that makes them feel bad or ill. Yeah. And and plus I had this warrior mentality that I always I mean, I don't want to walk out the house if I'm not ready to take on like an army, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's my own little <laughs> issue. So growing up, <laughs> so is it growing up because you watched so many of these action movies? Did that have an early impact on your life? Well, like I said, I don't know what came first. I think the condition, <laughs> the mental condition, yeah. came first. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, I was like so many other people, kids growing growing up in harsh environments, and what you tend to do is build armor. The more sensitive you are, the more armor you build. And people like myself, like you know, like look like look at Mike Tyson. Yeah. He's a sensitive individual, yeah. but when you're in the, in the streets, you got to protect yourself, right? Because you you feel everything. And I heard and so, I heard yeah, growing yeah. up, you really didn't like bullies anyway. No, I didn't like bullies at all. Yeah. I, and I would fight every bully. I would, <laughs> but you would start made, a fight just yeah, to fight. Yeah, which which made me kind of a bully, you know, it, you know. But I was like. <laughs> Thought I was justified. Hey man, but you, you, I, the difference that you had that I didn't have at that time is that you had training and I didn't. Mm -hmm. I remember my first fight, and you know, I was watching somebody pick on my cousin, yeah. and this dude was a street dude, and I didn't have any kind of like training at all, man. And my mama said, "Look, if you don't fight him, I'm gonna beat you." Mm -hmm. So I took my whooping in the street. I learned how to fight after that, yeah. you know. But it took a, a terrible beat down where you probably was didn't mind. Facing off at the bully, and of course. Well, he... if if I'd been a youngster now, I, they would have put me on all kind of medication. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they would have, because I just I was not well. Really, I mean, I, my favorite thing to do was like punch holes in walls of like tenement buildings. Like, uh, I find an abandoned building just to wreck it, and something was wrong with me. Wow. But like, it was always this, you know, it's like I looked like a pit bull that had to like tear something up. You know, and so, it, you know, karate was a good thing for me to put my energy in. Were you the only child? 
No, no, I was the only child that like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Neil, since they were, how many brothers and sisters? Uh, uh, you know, my my father was one of those, like the car dealers. You get, I got <laughs> you get two kids. I get okay. How many you want? And there's one over here. So, so a lot of kids. I gotta actually think about it. A lot of kids. Like, I think there's like seven of us. So, you, so you had kids. Well, your brothers and sisters, siblings around your age, then. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And and yeah. Y'all, y'all, did y'all fight a lot? Um, Play fight. Not, not really. Not really. Everybody knew something was wrong with me. <laughs> wow. So, so um, you know, like, yeah, I had older brothers and yeah, you know, yeah and one close to my age, but um, you know, it, it was kind of like I was, you know, I I was the one that fought for everybody. <laughs> I was just. And I was big, really, really Early young. On. Yeah, it was strange. I, I I haven't grown an inch since I was thirteen. I was That's this right. height. No way. Yeah, and I had a voice like this. No way. Yeah. So I at was thirteen. Like, yep. And I was dating girls that I was g- hanging out with. Girls older much women. older than me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got it early, brother. Yeah. He had his training early, baby. Yeah. Hey, look, it's Michael Jaya right with us tonight inside of the Quiet Storm. If you'd like to talk with him one to one, we'll grant that opportunity at one eight five five four five three six six nine four. Are we going with the young lady or the young man? The lady, okay. Um you know, we want to talk about uh what's next for you. Um I know you said you're working on uh, a Sony project and you're directing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what can you tell us anything about that? Sure. It's uh, Never Back Down three. I di- I directed Never Back Down two. Wow. Now it's um, it's a character I play who's okay. like kind of like the sensei of, oh. of the thing. So it's going into my story for the third part where he steps into the MMA arena and starts. Again, man, this is just like uh, a walk in the park with you. You can do this with your eyes closed, pretty much. Well, it, uh, it's fun. I, I, I ain't complaining. I know that's yeah. right. So you're in it and you're directing it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I, it, that's that's pretty grueling because you have to be really, uh, and I'm sure you are critical when it comes to certain things that you do and you see right. yourself on camera. We can get ready to go back online. We'll come back and talk with Michael uh, offline in just a moment. Got you. Welcome inside the quiet storm, baby. This is Confessions of Love Time. We have a pretty interesting uh, topic on the table, but we have company over tonight uh, that you, of course, love and admire. I call him Mr. Muscle, but uh, you ladies, you know, come on. Like, I'm watching your comments. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to have Miko uh, write down some of the comments that's been posted up because we posted him up um, last night. Uh, we posted your picture up last night to just kind of let everyone know that you were coming. And um, some of the ladies that were in here chose the pictures to go oh, up. Baby. But, you know, it was nothing crazy, you know, but okay. they, they put the picture up and it, it got some pretty interesting reactions. So we'll find out um, we'll find out what they said in just a moment. Uh, the question on the table um, is, is it a man's responsibility to keep his woman happy in the relationship? And if he doesn't, does she have a right to complain? I got a young lady on the, on the line, Mike, uh, Kimberly. Kimberly, say hello to Michael. Oh, my God, Michael, you are absolutely gorgeous. I love all of your work. I think the most recent movie that I've seen of yours was, it was like the Street Fighter movie. I can't remember the name of it. A little Asian guy, and you were just kicking behind all throughout the movie. So I love your work, and I love you. Thank you, thank you. I think you're talking about Blood and Bone, that one. (laughs) Yes, exactly, Blood and Bone. You know what I did? I bought it on my phone, on my smartphone, and I watched it on the phone. So, really good movie. Oh, thanks. Uh, Yeah, but listen. Yeah. About this little, um, you know, the what you're talking about tonight. Yeah. It is absolutely the brother or the man's responsibility to keep his woman or to make the woman happy. However, that responsibility does not lie solely on that man. Mm. So you have to look at it. Women, especially sisters today, we're career women. We have our own businesses. We do a lot for ourselves to make ourselves happy. So it, it's just nice to have a man or to have that brother just kind of balance it out, you know, and keep the happiness going. You agree with you that, know. Mike? Well, yeah. I mean, I think there's one thing we got to talk about is, okay, keep his woman happy, right? So that means there's a hurdle that's already been been okay. jumped over. Yeah. So if this is somebody right. you have decided to make your woman, mm. well, then, therefore, yeah, you're supposed to make her happy. You have I mean, to be, make her be, happy, be, of course. Be, you know, like you I make said, each other you know, happy. Like, I mean, that that's the other side of the thing. But it's not just solely on one, one side, but... I feel That's like what I'm th- saying. It's not solely his responsibility to keep you happy because 
if you rely on that brother constantly to keep you happy and you're not doing anything for yourself yeah. to make you happy, I mean, pamper yourself, go have your nails done, have your hair done. There's certain things that we have to do as women to keep ourselves happy, but it is the responsibility of that special someone, that special man in your life yeah. to make you happy and to keep you happy as well. But gentlemen, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. But Lenny, as always, thank you for loving music. Thank you for supporting. I appreciate it, my love. You're more than welcome, man. Take care. Good night, Michael. Good night. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> thank you so much. Shout out to all my Virgos. Hey, don't forget, y'all, if you're celebrating a birthday, whether it's a Virgo or you're a Libra or you're a Sagittarius, the last Quiet Storm Midnight Yacht Party is going down on Friday, September 26th. Uh, and Mike, if you're in town, man, you're more than welcome to come. Uh, Leon is actually uh, hosting this, and uh, he's going to turn it up and turn it out. You know, so I know you don't get a chance to hang too much because you're always working, man. You're working and working and working. You have, you're in uh, the New York area uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, for the Urban Film Fest screening of, uh, of a film that you're very proud of called Rousing Falcon. Please. Falcon Rising. Fa- what, yeah. Why do I have it backwards? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so tell us about that, that flick that's coming up. Well, Falcon Rising, I play a, a, a combat veteran okay. who's uh, suffering from PTSD. Mm-hmm. But um, you know he, he uh, gets involved with a, a situation when his sister, played by Layla Ali, Mm. gets hurt in Brazil mm. and he he flies there to find out who did it and uncovers like there's a mafia thing and all that stuff. And all hell he breaks loose. Yeah, he goes heads up. You know, so it's it's a real action yeah. type of movie. This is like your this is your lane. Well thank you. Yeah, I I've, I've been wanting to do things like this. Well look, but you're doing so so many good things of course in uh in what we love to see you in. And again the the, uh, the, the, the For Better For Worse is doing quite well on the OWN Network. Uh, look, if you'd like to speak to Michael and get involved with our topic of conversation or talk to him personally, uh, please give us a call at 1-855-453-6694. Here's Trey Songs, baby. Welcome and thank you for watching uh, tonight. Uh, Falcon Rising, I get it right now. Falcon Rising is the film that we want you to be locked in on. Uh, again, it's going to be up in New York City at the AMC Theater this weekend. Uh, please make sure you come out and give it some much love and much support. And of course, Michael will be there to, uh, to enjoy it as well with you. Um, let's talk about uh, TV. Mm-hmm. TV, your preference uh, film over TV? Because yeah, I, like, I know Hollywood has a, a definitely... Uh, uh, an obstacle that a lot of brothers, you know, a lot of African Americans have a hard time as ascertaining roles in Hollywood on a regular basis. If we look at your body of work, one would say that you haven't had a hard time because uh, you have over thirty films that you've done, right, um, right, and and it's growing. Yeah, I mean, I I look I looked at it as a business first and foremost, and and really, if you look at most of the films I do now, they're self generated. Uh, I'm really not doing a lot that, you know, um, you just kind of uh, get cast in. I'm, I'm producing these things. Like Blood and Bone, Black Dynamite, uh, uh, Falcon Rising, I'm, I'm producing these things. Uh, it, it is hard for a black man in this business if you don't, if you're not mindful of the business part of it and generating it yourself, knowing your worth, and going at it that way because I, you know, I mean, there's a lot that I was, I, I learned early on. Um, and you know what? You remember Time Act, right? Oh, yeah. His situation taught me a lot. How so? Well, when Time Act came out in Last Dragon, I said, man, he's going to be a, you know, a fixture for a long time. I could not understand how in the world. They didn't embrace him, the Hollywood machine, when they were giving every, any mediocre martial artist who was white mm-hmm. a chance. A chance. They, they would give, the they, they people were getting three and four movie contracts and everything else. And I'm like, wait a minute, Time Mac has had a successful movie far better than those other ones. Right. Uh, good looking cat, yep. can do martial arts. Already has a successful movie and a major fan base. And how in the world would they not give him his own? I mean, how would they not embrace that? When when that happened and years went by, I was like, there's no way I'm going to go into this without 
understanding and um, taking taking charge of what my worth is in the marketplace. And so it, from day one, I was learning about producing and directing wow. and, and writing. And I mean, uh, that's really, you know, I mean, I, I wrote and produced something and the director of the Tyson movie mm -hmm. saw that and, he, and, and also the director, of the, the producer of Spawn mm -hmm. saw it. And they said, this guy knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that, that changed my whole life because I was already doing these things when nobody knew me. So as opposed to sitting and waiting for opportunity to come your way, you nope. created opportunity for yourself. Absolutely, I encourage everybody, everybody who's trying to be in this business to, to self-generate, to create things. Because I mean, you know, I got, an, you know, there's, there's agendas, man. I'm telling you, growing up, I saw a lot of really powerful images when I was younger. Sure, you, we saw them. Yeah, you know Fred Williams and Jim Brown, all that. And then, you know, you had female powerful images you as did. well. Yeah, Pam Greer, wow, Tamla, Tamla Dobson. Oh, have you seen a female? Nope. Anywhere not, not near Pam Greer since then? No, not not to that magnitude. By no means. It, I I don't even think half that magnitude. <laughs> you know, not, really, right, right? Not an action. You know, and, and so how has, has there never been another action? You know, female. How come there's never been any more Jim Browns, Fred Williamsons, and all that type of stuff? It's one of the reasons I even wrote Black Dynamite. Wow. You know, on uh, one level is the parody, but it was a o loving homage to it because it was just unmistakably black and powerful and non-castrated. Yeah. And, you know, I wanted to put that image out and, you know, have something that kind of worked on a visceral and every other kind of level. And so it's this is one of these things where it's not embraced. It's not it's like our image, if it's if it's um if it's controlled by other people, is not gonna be strong. No. It's not. It's gonna be the you know the you know, the guy you pat on the head, or the guys who who's running for his freedom, and pretty much those those roles that people are comfortable with us in. Well, you must have a high admiration for Tyler Perry then. Oh, because absolutely. Of, because of what he's doing and what he's done and what he's created, and I'm sure Hollywood is really confused on the the magnitude of success that he always seems to uh, accomplish. Well, yeah. I mean, he knows his audience. I mean, I'm trying to do the uh, very same thing right. in an action world. Exactly. You exactly. Know? That's perfect. I, I know a worldwide action audience, and, and I'm speaking to them. Wow. Well, you, you're definitely speaking strongly, brother. And, you know, we need more of that. And just as much as we need more of us to tell our own stories. Right. Uh, and that's that's gotten away from us a lot, too. You know, yeah. we kind of stray away from some of those stories. I mean, shout out to uh, George Lucas, who found it, you know, within his heart to come out with uh, the, uh, Red Tails, talking about the Tuskegee Airmen. But it would have been greater. It would have been greater mm -hmm. if we had had, you know, a brother uh, definitely get into homes. Now, I understand, you know, so there's something, there are certain doors that, you know, other people can get it in quicker than you. Well, I mean, that helps. But still, you got to have something that everybody's interested in seeing. It's true. You know what I mean? This really? is true. No, this is if, true. If, if, if folks feel like they've seen this movie before, they're, they're not coming. <laughs> you know? Even if the lineup is hot. Yeah. Because it, well, yeah, it was out before. It, yeah, well, dude, Color Purple didn't do well. Mm. People don't remember that. Mm. Amistad didn't do well. Because there's certain things where some people don't want to be reminded about, you know, and it's and and is it us though, or is it? It's both. I mean, it, it's both because we don't want to feel feel little, mm. you know. A lot of people don't want to feel like that anymore. We want to feel empowered. The, why did the black exploitation movement work so well with all these Shaft and Superfly and all that type of stuff? Because we were empowered, and those are the, those are the movies where we went in droves. Those those movies saved Hollywood actually. Wow. Because He's preaching know, it tonight, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Michael J. White is with us tonight. Welcome inside the Quiet Storm. I hope that you're watching and enjoying the conversation online. Uh, Michael J. White is with us tonight. And uh hey, if you haven't seen uh For Better or For Worse, I know that you're going to start locking in with it. Um you were just sharing with us online that you have just uh, wrapped up season four. 
Uh, obviously, we're just getting into a season, yeah. but you just finished wrapping it up. Um, uh, how wonderful has it been working with Tyler Perry? It's it's amazing. I mean, for anybody who you know dislikes you know what he does or whatever, may, may find fault with it. If you just keep, if you just look at the other sides of everything, yeah. think of, think of the positives. You know, cer- certain things. There's people that really love the, the stuff, and the, you know, he's got a diversity of things. He does. So when people just see only one one side, I, I kind of makes me kind of wonder a little bit because if you can't see how many people he's actually touching and what he's doing in the industry and what he has done yeah. and what he continues to do, then that that's it's a shame because it's uh, he's proving so much. And I just wish more people would kind of take a page out of his book and and create their own stuff and and have their voice be, be heard. Well, you know, we, we've learned again by uh, listening to you online that uh, you have taken the bull by the horn and you started. You know, a lot of the movies that uh, Michael shared with us a little while ago, a lot of the movies that we've seen him in, he's actually produced them and directed them and uh, was really the the. the the, the, the enforce behind them. And, and I commend you for doing that, man. I, I didn't realize, I don't think a lot of people realize that you were the driving force uh, around a lot of your productions. And it ain't gonna stop no time soon. Oh no, oh no, this is just the beginning. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of our stories that we we have not seen. I mean, the action movie stuff makes makes it kind of worldwide. They, they do amazingly well overseas. You know, without even <laughs> pumping them up, right? Because they right. have, they kind of have a thirst for this, uh, and you know, here too. Mm-hmm. But we sometimes do. you you have the entities that are a little they they, they don't want to put things out in the theater because they think, you know, nobody's gonna see. You know, it's but then far from reality. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's things change over time. Michael Jai Wright is with us tonight inside the Quiet Storm. I, I'm going to let him go shortly, ladies. So if you'd like to talk with him. Uh, please give us a call at 1-855-453-6694, 1-855-453-6694. Uh, the Reality of Love is coming up in just a moment. We'll put him in the middle uh, with the crazy lady, Indy Smith and myself, in just a moment. So uh, we'll talk with him online. Make sure you go to LennyGreen.com and get all of uh, the behind-the-scenes conversation. Let's continue with uh, a beautiful song by a beautiful songstress. Her name is Avery Sunshine. Fellas, I know how much you appreciate a woman. When she calls your name in that most intimate moment, welcome to the quiet storm. Michael knows about that too. 